He was a great husband, a great father, uh, loved his family, good family man, and just an all-around good person. Great actor, great singer, great person. Mira said about him on the day that he passed away, it was very heartwarming. Look, I have five daughters, you know, and I would be honored and thrilled and, and just so happy if my daughters would leave me or I would leave my daughters and they would have the same impression of me. So this is what Mira Sorvino had to say on the day her dad passed. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is good on this end. As you can see, I'm still um, filming out of my London studio, which happens to be my hotel room. And uh, it's been a great tour so far. We've gone through uh, half of it. We've got about eight dates left and I'm thrilled. I mean, we've been so welcomed in every city. The response has been great. And we're just having a great time. London is a great place. I told you we were in Belfast uh, not too long ago. People were wonderful. The Irish were just terrific. North Island. So we didn't get a chance to visit Dublin, but uh, hopefully that'll come up soon. You know, into this uh, happiness that we have right here that I'm surrounded by, unfortunately, we've got to bring a little sadness into this. I cannot believe it, but yet another iconic mob actor has passed on, Paul Sorvino. He was 83 years old. He passed away this week. He was kind of sick. He suffered from asthma. I know that. I had the opportunity and the pleasure to meet with Paul last year at the MobCon in Atlantic City. We spent some time together. He had a very long line of people that wanted to talk to him, meet with him, take a photo with him. He was very gracious, very kind. I really enjoyed it. And it's very, very sad. But, you know, you know, in, in uh, Italian, we say normally things pass in threes. So we had those three deaths. We had Ray Liotta, we had Jimmy Kahn, and, of course, Paulie Walnuts, better known uh, as Paulie Walnuts. I'll call him by that. But now we have a fourth. And, uh, man, you know, uh, I'm 71 years old. It just starts to make you think, you know. We're getting up there at age. Some of us are. And, uh, and the, uh, the end is coming at some point in time. So you've got to try to keep yourself in shape, make the most out of life, and, and just do the best you can. But uh, I know Paul's going to be sorely missed by many. He was a, a good man. Uh, anybody that I know, I knew Chaz uh, Palmateri knew him, spoke well about him. People that I've mentioned his name to always spoke highly of him. He was a gentleman, great father, great uh, husband to his wife. And it's really sad, you know, but this is more of a, a tribute to him. You know, of course, we'll mourn his death and we'll miss him, but we got the silver screen, we got television to always watch his great work. But this is kind of a tribute to him as an actor, as a husband, a father, a man. And we've done it for the past three, and we'll do it again for Paul Sorvino, he's certainly uh, worthy and uh, deserving of that. So Paul was born in, in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Uh, his mom, I believe, was a homemaker. She also taught piano. She had piano lessons taught in our home. His father was a foreman in a robe factory. I guess they made robes. I, I don't know exactly what he did, but uh, that's what he was. They were from Naples originally. He was Neapolitan, noble don, like myself, so we have that in common. And uh, I think Paul learned at an early age that he had a, a love to perform. Um, he loved to sing. He spent 18 years taking voice lessons at a major academy in Manhattan, from what I understand. And then a few years after that, he went on to uh, star in his first film, which was not star, I'm sorry, he played a supporting role in Where's Papa? And then a few years later, he played a supporting role to uh, Al Pacino in Needle in the Park, which was a uh, a great film, and I believe he and Al Pacino became friends on that film. So uh, he started his career in that way. Of course, he's best known for Goodfellas. He played a friend of mine, Paul Ivario. He was Paul Cicero in the film. He did a brilliant job. He really did. And some of his lines uh, I love when he was sitting down with uh, Henry Hill and the restaurant owner, and they wanted him to take over the restaurant because uh, Tommy DeSimone was abusing him. And he looked and he said, I don't know anything about restaurants. I come in and I eat. I order food. That's all I do. It was just great. And then, uh, you know, when he said, Tommy's a bad seed, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? The way he said it, his mannerisms 
Systems were great, and he just, uh, he played the role great. He was nothing like the real Paul Ivario, who was not the most pleasant guy to be around, let me put it nicely that way. But he did a great job, and he's certainly known for that iconic role. But I want to tell you something, I want to read something from his own lips in an interview that he gave about that character. I thought it was very interesting. And here's what he said. He said, I've done a lot of comedies as well as dramas, but I've never done a really tough guy. I never had it in me, he said. And this part called for a lethality, which I felt was beyond me. I called my manager three days before we started shooting Goodfellas, and I said, get me out. I'm going to ruin this great man's picture, and I'm going to ruin myself. Now, the manager, being wise, said, call me tomorrow, and if necessary, I'll get you out. And then Paul says, then I was going by the whole mirror to adjust my tie, he added. I was just inconsolable. And I looked in the mirror and literally jumped back a foot. I saw a look I'd never seen, something in my eyes that alarmed me, a deadly, soulless look in my eyes that scared me and was overwhelmingly threatening. And I looked at the heavens and said, you found it. So I called my manager and said, I'm playing the role. It was amazing. He never saw himself as a gangster in Goodfellas, and yet he played it so well. You know, I have such respect for actors because I've done it a little bit, not by choice, but they got me in a film, Let There Be Light. I was playing almost myself, and it was difficult. And I just love these actors, and I appreciate their work, these brilliant actors. All the dialogue that they can recall and remember and then play somebody else. It's an, it's an amazing um, attribute when somebody can do that. I got to say, you know, the great actors, you got to give them credit, man. They work hard at it and it's just brilliant. And I think uh, some of it comes naturally, but a lot of it is a lot of work, a lot of repetition, a lot of practice. So I uh, really have respect and have respect for Paul for that. The two roles that he's really known for, aside from all the other great work he did, was obviously Goodfellas and then Sergeant Sarita in Law and Order. And that's a, uh, a role he played for almost three seasons, I believe, 29 episodes, until he hung it up. He quit. And he said the schedule was too exhausting. He was worried about his voice because, again, singing was his love, and he just hung it up. And I believe that they had him shot in the series, and uh, he was disabled. They moved him to a, dis a desk job in another precinct, and then Jerry Orbach came in, and uh, he took over the role as a different character. But he was terrific, and unfortunately, we lost Jerry Orbach, too. He's gone. So a lot of these great actors, you know, and, you know, it's old age, man. You just got to move on. You move on from here, hopefully, to paradise. For all of those of you who have confessed their sins and accepted Jesus as your Savior, like I have, I'm a Christian, that's what we believe. We're going to paradise. Hopefully, all of these iconic men are up there. Who knows? I don't know, you know. Last second of your life, okay, you can confess your sins and wholeheartedly and sincerely accept Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we believe you're going in paradise. Thief on the cross, don't forget that. Now, Paul also played a gangster in a couple other films. In The Rocketeer, he played a gangster. It was a Disney film. Not too familiar with that film, but he did play a gangster there. In the movie The Firm, he played a gangster. Tony Marolto, I believe his name was. I watched that. He did a good job in that, obviously, also. I mean, he does a good job in everything. He was great. But some of his other notable screen credits uh, were Nixon. He played in Nixon. It was a great film. Romeo and Juliet. In the movie Reds, he played an Italian-American communist. In that movie, it wasn't, it wasn't received very well. Not his role, the movie in itself. An Italian-American communist. Who knows? And then he, uh, he also had a role in Dick Tracy. So he's done other things, a lot of other things, as a matter of fact. He's done Broadway, he's done everything. He was asked in, a, in an article who his heroes were in life, and he had three. One was Martin Luther King Jr., the other one was Desmond Tutu, and the third one was Muhammad Ali. And I believed he liked Ali for just his character and what he stood for. He was somebody that believed in his convictions and he stood up for them. You all know the story of Muhammad with the draft. He was a conscientious objector. He stood up for it. As a result of that, they took away his boxing title. He was a champion at that point. Came back, regained the title, and I think that really impressed Cicero. So um, those were his three idols. Uh, his personal life, he lived in Madison, Indiana, and he also lived in L.A. He had three kids. And one of them was Mira Sorvino. I think you're familiar with her. She followed in her father's footsteps and became a, a pretty well-known actress, does a great job. His son, Michael, was also an actor, is also an actor, I should say. And he had another daughter called Amanda. I do remember reading a story once where uh, Amanda was in a hotel room 
and she was being threatened by her ex-boyfriend. He was pounding on the door, threatening to hurt her, screaming at her. She got scared. She called the police, and she called her father. Her father was 67. Paul was at that time. Well, he got there before the police, and he took care of the situation. He had a gun because he was a, uh, a deputized sheriff, a deputized sheriff in uh, Pennsylvania, so he was allowed to carry a gun across state lines. And he got there and took care of the matter. Um, we don't know how. He didn't kill the guy. I know that. He didn't shoot him. But he took care of it. He backed the guy off even before the police came. So Paul was, uh, you know, even at 67 years old, he was a strong supporter of his family and of his children. So very admirable, in my opinion, obviously. There was also another situation involving Mira when uh, it was learned that Harvey Weinstein had tried to sexually assault her. We all know the story with Harvey Weinstein. And uh, Mira never told him, never told Paul about this for whatever reason. I guess she was afraid of what Paul might do. Uh, and he found out when it became public. And he was absolutely destroyed over it. He, he was just so upset. And he made a statement, I want to read about it, to show you what type of guy he was. This guy was no, uh, no flack in any way. He was a tough guy in his own way when it came to protecting his family. And this is what he said when he heard about Harvey Weinstein trying to sexually abuse Mira. And by the way, she refused it, and Harvey Weinstein blackballed her in the industry for quite some time. There was a time when she couldn't get work. You know, Harvey Weinstein had a lot of weight at one point in time. We all know the story. I'm not going to get into that. It was pretty disgusting, if you ask me. But she was blackballed. And she still never told her father. I think she was afraid of what her father might do. But let me read what Paul wrote about it, what Paul said about it, I should say. If I had known what Harvey did, he would not be walking. He'd be in a wheelchair. I agree with him. My daughter is a wonderful person, he said at the time, a courageous and wonderful human being and doesn't deserve to have been treated that way by this pig. This pig will get his comeuppance. The law will get him. He's going to go to jail and he's going to die in jail. Pretty intense. But if he doesn't, I'll just slap him around. I won't do anything terrible, but I'll just slap him around. So Paul was pretty upset about it. Of course, at that time, it already became public, and Harvey was already going through the legal issue with that. So, And he certainly did get his comeuppance. You know, you can't act that way, man. You just can't be abusive to women. It just doesn't work. It's going to catch up with you at some point in time. So uh, for all of those of you out there who have experienced it, you know, I'm sorry for it, you ladies, I should say. You know, and this was a terrible situation. Imagine being blackballed for that, and yet she still wouldn't tell her father. Unreal. You know, and Paul did a lot of other things, too. You know, aside from being an actor and a singer and a, a uh, copyright person and all the things that he did, it was interesting. He had some civil conscience, a social civil conscience, I should say. In March 2008, he and his daughter Amanda lobbied Congress to pass the American Horse Slaughter Prevention Act. He was very into horses. And and the Sylvino family runs a private horse rescue operation in uh, Pennsylvania. So he was very into uh, saving and preserving uh, horses. And I guess they were slaughtering them at the time. He found out about it. He lobbied Congress, and it was successful, from what I might add. He also uh, launched in 19, I think in 2007, he launched Paul Sylvino Foods. And he had uh, tomato sauce, pasta sauce, I should say, based upon his uh, mom's recipe. And I think a few years later, it went into a lot of uh, groceries stores, markets in the Northeast, and he ran that pretty successfully. I've never tasted it, can't comment on it. Maybe some of you have. If you have, make a comment in the comment section and let us know if you liked it. But I'm sure if Paul made it and endorsed it, I know how Italian moms cook great pasta sauce, so I'm sure it was wonderful. Uh, but that's another thing that he did. You know, and talking about being typecast, you know, I think a lot of actors don't like to be typecast. You know, they play a role, they do it so well, and then everybody sees them as only that. You know, Robert De Niro was one guy who was able to break that. I mean, he was so great in so many of these, you know, mob movies that he played. Can't mention them all. He was terrific. But then he did comedy, you know, and he was terrific in comedy. I mean, he's very versatile. So some of them don't want to be typecast in one particular role because they feel it kind of stifles people from seeing their real, true acting ability because actors want to act. They don't only want to do one thing. They want to act, you know. So, um, uh, you know, he made a statement, and I think it's worthy enough to read. It was a wonderful statement that he made. I want to read, and then I'm going to close it with something that I thought was very heartwarming and heartfelt. Yeah, so this is what Paul said in 2014 in an article that uh, he was interviewed for. Paul said, most people think I'm either a gangster or a cop or something. But the reality is, I'm a sculptor. I'm a painter. 
a best-selling author, many, many, many things. I'm a poet. I'm an opera singer. But none of them is a gangster. But you know, obviously, I sort of have a knack for playing these things. It's almost my later goal in life to disabuse people uh, of the notion that I'm a slow-moving, heavy-lidded thug. And most people's impression of me is that because of the success of Goodfellas and a few other things. But they forget that I was also Dr. Kissinger in Nixon, the deaf lawyer in Dummy. And they forget a lot of things that I've done. It would be nice to have my legacy more than that of just a tough guy. So that's how Paul wanted to be remembered, not only as Paul Cicero in The Goodfellas, not only as a tough guy, but as all those things that we just mentioned. But, you know, I think if it really came down to it, what would Paul want to be remembered by? And I think something we should all, you know, take notice of. He was a great husband, a great father, uh, loved his family, good family man, and just an all-around good person. And I think I can end this tribute to him by saying something that uh, Mira said about him on the day that he passed away. It was very heartwarming. Look, I have five daughters, you know, and I would be honored and thrilled and, and um, you know, just so happy if my daughters would leave me or I would leave my daughters and they would have the same impression of me. So let me read that for you. This is what Mira Sorvino had to say on the day her dad passed. My father, the great Paul Sorvino, has passed, 54-year-old Mira tweeted on Monday. My heart is rent asunder. A life of love and joy and wisdom with him is over. He was the most wonderful father. I love him so much. I'm sending you love in the stars, Dad, as you ascend. I mean, what more can you say? It almost gets me a little bit choked up, but uh, that says it all. Just a good man, great actor, great singer, great person, and a terrible loss for his family and certainly for all of us who enjoyed his work over the years. So, Paul, you're going up there. Hopefully, you know, people... You know, I said something, uh, I think I tweeted out that, you know, Paul is up there now having a sit down with the rest of the Goodfellow and the Godfather cast. And some people say, Michael, you know, how could you say that? You know, you don't know if he went to heaven. Well, you know what? I'd love to assume that they all did. As a Christian, you know, we may be angry with people here on earth and we may get upset at times. We don't want anybody going anywhere but paradise. And who are we to judge? I don't know what, you know, Paul's feeling was in his life. Hopefully, you know, he accepted Christ and as a Christian believed that he is in paradise. And the same for, you know, Ray Liotta and Jimmy Kahn and Paulie Walnuts. That's what I'm going to continue to call him. He's best known for that. And so, you know, hopefully they're all up there together now, you know, enjoying paradise for all of eternity. And that's my wish for all of them. So hopefully that's taking place right now and there's some major sit down up there. And they're looking down on all of us and, uh, you know, waiting for our turn to join them all. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, uh, how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe, ladies. Not going to reiterate it, but please be safe out there. Be healthy. God bless every one of you. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.